Today we're off to explore East Fjorden. Um, we've got our rifle, we've got good wind, we've got food, our batteries are charged up, our tanks are full of water, and the wind is perfect. So today we are setting off to sail, hopefully, to Pyramiden, which is an old, abandoned Russian coal mining town. We're ready to uh, kick the tires and light the fires, as they say. Stern is off. Yeah. Second reef on the main? Oh, definitely first reef. Oh. So far so good. We, it's been a really, really fast sail. <laughs> yeah, we've been sailing at like seven surfing to nine. It's been a good time. Yeah, but Cruising, we are about 15 miles from Pyramid Inn and you can actually see the glacier across from the town from here. It's insane. I think this is the, the biggest glacier we've seen so far from Def the boat. Definitely the closest we've ever sailed to a glacier. Yeah. And the town's only about six miles away, so. Today we're just gonna get in and probably eat some dinner and go to bed. Uh, and then maybe tomorrow we might go and like explore yeah. the glacier. I guess we'll see. If it's nice and calm, we'll take the boat. It'll be nice. Two hours away? Yeah, we have about two more hours of this. <laughs> and we'll be in Pyramidin. Holy mother, that's the, that's the other anchorage, isn't it? Yep. Oh, wow. Lovely. Back to the well runs dry. Okay, sounds good. We'll uh, be monitoring Channel 9. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, you're welcome. Enjoy. <laughs> Saw us on AIS. That was very nice of them. Yeah. All right, Channel 9. We're staying on That's Channel 9. All right, so radio's confirmed that we are, which is funny because the guys over there said we we're supposed to be on Channel 12. It's Channel 9. Um, yeah, lines and fenders, and we'll get ready to drop sail and go in.
that's about right. We are docked in a town called Pyramidin, which is an abandoned Russian coal mine center. Uh, it was operational back in the 1920s, and back then there used to be about a thousand people keeping this place working, but it got abandoned in 1980. Since then, there were only maybe three or four caretakers on the site, but now there's about 20 or so people because over the years this place became a little bit more touristy so there are tour boats that come in and out there's actually a restaurant and a hotel here too and but the cool part is it kept all the buildings original sort of as historical sites so today we are just walking around and we're going to check out some old russian buildings because technically we are in russia right now because everybody on the radio spoke Russian <laughs> and that's cool there's actually a relatively new dock here too it doesn't have water or power but it's just enough so that boats can come and spend a few days so our baby girl Uma is docked in Russia it's crazy though this place really looks like a zombie war zone <laughs> It looks like it's out of a video game. It looks like you're like in a video game, yes. bombed out World War II town. I'm waiting, I'm just waiting to be surprised by a zombie polar bear just popping out of the buildings. <laughs> You want to go in? After you. <laughs> oh, good. What is this place? This is crazy.
crazy. Part of me is nervous that the whole building will collapse. <laughs> It is a little crooked, isn't it? It is very much very crooked. Cool. The highest point, my guess, would be water. Yeah, I think it's water. I think that's the beauty of being able to come here on our own boat because on a tour you're only limited to where they tell you to go and how much time you have but if you come here on your boat and if you come here on your own house then right. you can you know you can go whenever you want basically. I think it's awesome because uh, the Polar Girl, Brim Explorer and some of the smaller little red tour boats all come in here and they all get about an hour mm -hmm. to go around and see like the two things or three things and then they all leave. And we've been here for like six <laughs> hours wandering around today and we've only made it through like a quarter of the town. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely like being on our own clock yeah. and not worrying too much about scheduling a thing. But the other cool part is if you want to come and see these places, uh, there are tour boats that come to these places. So you get a plane ticket to Svalbard, you charter a tour boat, you hop on board and you can come and see all these things in a day, yep. uh, which is really neat. And it does make it pretty accessible, but I'm glad we have the luxury of time up here because Absolutely. this place is amazing. Yes, I agree. But we are about to head to the restaurant now because we are pretty hungry and we're gonna grab a bite to eat and then we'll probably wait till the tour boat leaves and maybe around midnight, one o'clock, we'll come back out and take some really cool pictures and, you know, wander around town a bit more because whatever light we're having now is the light we're going to have for the next two months. <laughs> We're trying to figure out which of these building is the restaurant. <laughs> There's a lot of buildings and they all look about the same. Because we're hungry. This is the only the one that has a door open. So I'm assuming that one's the one. Only one way to find out. Whoa. Where are we? We're in Russia. This is so weird. We're here. Yeah, we are. Damn. Who got in there? They had they had the gymnasium? Yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah. Basketball court. This is this is insanity. Yeah, I mean, the mine workers were working really hard. I mean, it's probably one of the worst jobs you can have. It's but cold too. They, you know, at least they had kind of this common hall where they could play and exercise. I wonder how old is a uh, this we, place look hunted? Should we go upstairs? I hear music. It's the ghost. Is the Russian ghost of Pyramid? No, all the lights are on here too. I think the restaurant's it's the upstairs. the Russian ghost of the North Pole. Oh. And yeah, look at this pool table. Man. <laughs> Who's that? Why is she copying me? We're not weird at all.
This does kind of remind me where we spent your birthday in the Bahamas, doesn't it? Yeah. And that abandoned uh, research facility or whatever. Oh my it was. gosh, that was creepy. Yeah, that was creepy. This All right, someone else is here. Oh, good. What do you mean? We Wait. are looking. Is we are looking for the restaurant in hotel. It's here. This yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're in the right place. Cool, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I actually don't see and don't know. All the back goes. It's gonna be like cafes and restaurants and <laughs> bars and pubs. I tell you, I guess the polar bears are under somewhere, right? Yeah, not only um, is this kind of crazy to be wandering around such an intact abandoned town, it's not like an old ghost town from made out of wood from 100 years ago and there's just some remnants of shacks left. Like, it's a proper town, the buildings are all still here. So it's kind of crazy to be walking around such a place. And it's this old Russian mining town, so all the signs are in Russian. But we're also rolling around with a rifle because we're in the middle of Polar, polar bear country, bear country. <laughs> so it's just very sort of dystopian to be like just feel the whole thing feels like a video game to me we're like rolling around this abandoned town you know like looking for bears there's gonna be like some zombie bears poking around the corner but it's a really cool spot but that's the thing too like Svalbard is full of these remote places and people come here to for the adventure to see walruses and polar bears and be completely isolated but part of why we're here is to experience the architecture aspect of it because we are architects and so you know, this is the first time that we are in a Russian style village and so we are still nerding out about all these buildings even though they are <laughs> completely destroyed. <laughs> really cool, you can see the guts of the inside of it all. Yeah, that's, it's like you're looking, it's, it's like if you're a biologist and you're looking at a skeleton of an animal. Yep. We're looking at the skeletons of the buildings and when we're looking at one of the rundown buildings we're kind of questioning why did it get did it get blown up or was it an avalanche or was it a mudslide or there's so many reasons why a building can die and some of them are completely intact and some of them are being sort of renovated but all of it is just fascinating Hi. You're in there. And this is not a picture book. Oh, you know what? I'd be willing to bet this has something to do with being able to breathe inside of the mine. This looks like a backpack you would wear that would like be like an oxygen scrubber or something. Bizarre. In a world where mine shafts were full of gold. <laughs> And polar bears roam the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy. Creepy. A lot of birds.
It's a lot of bird poop. It smells so bad. So, check this out. <laughs> this is that crazy big long tunnel that goes all the way up to the coal mine. It's not really a tunnel, I guess, except in the winter when it's probably full of snow. Do you think um, we can go up it? It's where all the cars of coal used to come down to get processed, and there's sort of a walkway up the side that looks in really good condition. Um, I think we should try to walk up it and yeah. see how far we can get before it's kind of sketchy. Because so I mean, this looks, light. This light, looks so I don't solid. Think, I don't think it's going to go that far. I think no. at some point it's going to cut off and we're going to not have another. This one looks really solid. The other taller one with all the birds in it looked pretty beat down and falling apart. -y. But uh, I think... I think we should go up it. I mean, we can try. <laughs> See how far we get? All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Just don't like make too much noise so that nothing falls on our heads. Oh, it's not that it's sketchy. It's pretty much the commute that the miners used to make every day to go to work. nowhere <laughs> <laughs> how far up are we pretty up pretty far up I feel like <laughs> we're only about a third of the way up <sighs> it's eight o'clock at night too you want dinner instead? <laughs> There's a lot more to go. I think it's just more of the same thing. Can you imagine just... doing this every single morning? Like on your way to work? This is your commute? Ugh. Well, I think we've <laughs> we've climbed enough to get the idea. <laughs> I thought we go get dinner. I'm hungry. I think we can go down, back down. It's crazy though. It's sketchy. I'm surprised how strong it is still. It's it's like very solid. Yeah. Slow and steady, slow and steady. You sure you want to run a marathon down there? It's insane to imagine that every single day workers would go all the way up to the mine and then come all the way back down and then the the rails it would fill I don't know what you call it, the carts. Little carts, little train cars. The train yeah. carts with uh with coal and it just zip down and back up empty, zip down, back up empty. At minus 20, can you imagine? And, and I've heard here, the mines in here stays about minus four degrees mm -hmm. all year. Because they're mining in permafrost. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's terrible. Oh, thanks. But I, I have a feeling, I don't know if you're, I don't know where I heard that, but I think this town, including Long Buren, are still running on coal, mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy to believe. Even if this town is abandoned, um, the, the mine itself is abandoned, but they're still running on the mine that is on the island and on the town. So there's enough leftover coal around here that they're still using yeah. it for the power plant. Yeah. They're yeah. not exporting anything, no. but they're using it locally, which is crazy. Yep. Long your beer run by coal too. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's not do that. <laughs> the whole thing comes <laughs> crashing down. Down we go. These are all windows of a ground story, so it goes down at least. Whoa. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That's crazy. Right. Yeah. 
I know they all look like Kika sized doors, but really they're normal human sized doors, except about a meter, at least a meter of mud in here. So this is a window, and I'm willing to bet that this building is about at least a meter or so further down into the ground. But it looks like all of this is sort of just Mother Nature taking back her territory. It looks like it's all sort of a big mud slidey, coal sloughy mess. And the whole building's bottom floor here is full of mud and coal and water. That's crazy. It's pretty cool. It's a very uh, extreme environment to put buildings, let's put it that way. And it looks like all the stuff they did up there is starting to wash back down and try to take over what they did down here. No wonder why it's abandoned. Yeah, right? Okay, so all the tour boats are officially gone. <laughs> so we've been walking around town and we met up with a few of the people that actually work here and there is a pub that's in the hotel that is open after hours, after all the tour boats go. So they invited us over for a few drinks since we are on the boat. Um, yeah, so we're going to go to the local pub, I guess. <laughs> the one bar slash restaurant that is on this site. Open. Ooh. What? Yes. Yes. Here. that there's like a hotel and a restaurant in the middle of like hundreds of abandoned, abandoned buildings and there's like <laughs> one building that's still working. <laughs> well, two. Like it feels so weird to just be in here and then go outside into like this completely abandoned, isolated, like run down, bird infested. Zombie land. <laughs> zombie land. And just step inside and be like, oh, a hotel. Cool. It's cool. <laughs> A real vodka contains only spirits and water, and this vodka is kind of that. And this is Beluga. It's really tasty, seriously. It's so smooth and cool and Very tasty, smooth. but it's not vodka because it contains also honey and vanilla something and spices and all this stuff. Many so it's a things. cocktail. <laughs> it's a this vodka one, cocktail. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. And this uh, real stuff. Yes, this and is the real stuff. Of it. And all so. the sea captain here told me that, um, you know, in... Uh, in sea captain. <laughs> 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 he told me that, you know, in, in all the western countries, like in all the spirits, they put a tiny, tiny amount of um, something that will make you throw up. So if you drink too much hard liquor, or liquor, you won't die, you will throw up and then... Oh, I see, I see. But that. in this vodka, it doesn't exist. Because <laughs> no, but it's pure. also what gives you it's the hangover. Pure. So uh, oh, while this no. hasn't, uh, the stuff, you, you don't feel a thing. Uh, Said the sea captain. Uh -huh. Says the sea captain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good morning. Look. 2.52. We're walking in the middle of the night back to our boat. Three, two, one. 